Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This video was inspired by the battle that I had to remove the aluminum handle off of the brass valve stem of my outside spigots recently. You might wonder, well, what does this have to do with electronics? Well, the battle was 100% traced back to galvanic corrosion, and this has everything to do with electronics and a lot of other things too. In fact, houses have burned down because of it. Products have misbehaved badly in the field, causing massive recalls because of this. But the truth is that people in general just don't know about it at all. In this video, I'll answer the question, what is it and how do I prevent it? If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's first see a couple scenarios where galvanic corrosion has caused real issues. So why does this product totally reset itself every time we try to print something using a thermal printer? Around and around and around and around they went, looking at this and looking at that, and frustration ensued. Then they noticed the power came from the power supply board to board A, where it was distributed to boards B, C, and the thermal printer. They measured the voltage at the pins of the power supply connector, and everything was just fine. Then they measured the same power supply voltage at the pins of the connectors, which feeds board B and C and the thermal printer, way out of tolerance. Why is that? Well, the connector from the power supply had gold-plated contacts. That's a good thing, right? The connector on board A that it plugged into had tin plated contacts. So what's wrong with this? I'll tell you in a moment. Scenario two. At one point, someone realized that aluminum was a lot cheaper than copper and conducts electricity almost as well as gold. So, well, let's start using aluminum wire for house wiring. And so they did. Aluminum wire in contact with brass and copper, other contacts and screws and the like? Well, what's wrong with this? Well, houses started burning down and the cause was traced back to an electrical issue. What was the problem in both of these cases? We have dissimilar metals in contact with each other. So why is this bad? There is a big technical explanation for what goes on here. The very short, simple explanation is that when we put the wrong two dissimilar metals in contact with each other, add some sort of electrolyte like moisture, and corrosion begins to grow at their junction. More technically, but not the full explanation, the core issue is the electrode potentials of the two metals, thus the term galvanic is used to describe this. The metal that is more reactive will act as the anode, and the less reactive metal will act as the cathode. In the presence of an electrolyte, the metal which is acting as the cathode starts attacking the metal that is acting as the anode. So, what does this corrosion cause? This corrosion acts like a resistor, dropping voltage across it when current is drawn through it. Current through a resistance produces heat. You have enough heat and you start burning down houses. You have enough voltage drop and your product resets every time the thermal printer tries to print. Now, this corrosion can also act like a diode. As a nonlinear device, two RF signals can mix in this corroded connection and produce a menagerie of mixing products causing interference or other problems. Or it can act like a demodulator for certain types of signals. 
Case in point, a pilot I knew would fly over a theater while talking on his radio. Now, in those days, they were using AM. A corroded connection on the input side of the audio amplifier in the theater demodulated his AM signal, and his side of the conversation was heard over the speakers in the theater. So, how can I predict what two metals I can safely put together? Well, this is a relatively easy thing to do. I present to you this lovely table which will assist us in our goal. Look down in the description for a link to download a copy of this table for yourself. Well, let's take a brief look at this. What you see here is a massively abbreviated table showing various metals that you might have contact with in electronics and mechanics. There are three distinct conditions represented here. First, there are those combinations of metals that we can put together and have absolute confidence that galvanic corrosion will not occur. This is represented by the white and the green cells. Then there are those combinations of metals that when put together in a saline environment in time experience galvanic corrosion. Now by a saline environment, I mean salt water or salty ocean air or some other electrolyte. These are represented by the yellow cells. Then there are those combinations of metals that absolutely will produce galvanic corrosion irrespective of their environment. You just don't do that. These are represented by the red cells. So how do we read this thing? Well, let's try an example. This is a combination that people do all the time when they buy cables for their home entertainment system. It is the same one that caused that product to reset when the printer tried to print, putting gold and tin together. The connector on the back of their home entertainment system sports tin-plated contacts. Unaware of the dynamics at play, people will buy cables that have gold-plated contacts. Now, this will be fantastic because, well, gold is awesome, right? Well, let's see how awesome this combination really is. I locate the gold row on the left. Then I locate the tin column on the top. I follow the gold row to the right and the tin column down until I find the cell where they intersect. And so what do I find there? I find a red cell with the number 670 in it. The legend at the bottom tells us that this means that galvanic corrosion will most certainly occur irrespective of environment. So what about that combination that caused my spigot handle to be nearly impossible to get off, aluminum in contact with brass? Well, following the same process, I find that I am in a yellow cell with a value of 440. So you would think that I should be okay. I mean, there's no salt air. There's, you know, uh, it's not on a ship or anything. However, 11 years of well water, which isn't 100% free of electrolyte properties produced galvanic corrosion between the handle and the shaft. The brass attacked the aluminum producing a white, crusty corrosion. So, how do we prevent this nastiness from happening? There are two things that we can do. First, we always consult the table to be sure that we're not going to be putting two metals together that are going to fight each other. There are much more complete lit tables available that you could consult, which will more precisely locate the exact metal or metal alloy that you're planning on using. Now, some of these are just lists of metals. The closer the two metals are on the list, the more like each other they are. The farther apart they are, the less like each other they are, and the more likely they are to produce galvanic corrosion. Try to pick metal combinations that are as similar as possible to each other. Second, there are compounds that can be added to these metallic interfaces which will either slow down 
or prevent galvanic corrosion from occurring. If you are forced by circumstances to put stuff together that will potentially fight with each other, do some research. Find the right compound to use if it exists, then use it per the directions on the package. So there you go. The mystery of the spigot handle has been solved. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.